Hey, Fabs here. Let's just cut straight to the chase without any unnecessary preamble. This video is all about the essential steps to become a 3D character artist. So number one on my list would have to be fundamentals. I can't stress this enough. I had the mindset of like fake it until you make it back in art school. And it's just led me on a roller coaster of just stressful times. I mean, I knew I was good at art. So I figured if I just created cool looking art that I'd get somewhere. Fortunately for me, I was able to do both, but my advice for you is to really dig deep in those fundamentals. The best way I can explain it is you can't build a house without some knowledge on building houses. So don't start a sculpt if you have no idea what direction it's going, which means you are making it up as you go. I can guarantee that all the artists in the industry today, no matter what discipline they decided to do and where they ended up, that they all started with fundamentals. So don't try and be that one that didn't. Next is pretty major, and this might sound a bit fishy, but really it's just as simple as it sounds, and it's copying. Don't take this the wrong way. Copying does sound bad, and we are told that it's not right. Well, maybe because we weren't really told how to copy. So take it from me. All my life as an artist, I copied art before going to art school. So it helped me understand the basic knowledge of art and being an artist. So now you're actually becoming more familiar with other artists in the industry and you're trying to get into that industry, but one can't enter the industry with artwork that's not theirs, right? So what do you do? When I say copy, it comes down to two major factors. How did the artist do that? And what did they do to get that result? When I say copy, I mean it in the simplest way. Copy the method, not the art itself. Apply those techniques to your unique concepts or ideas. It's strategic, so just learn how to grow as an artist without compromising your originality. That leads to the next thing on my list, which will definitely be finding your style. So this will obviously come in time, and the more time you spend behind the application, whether that's ZBrush, Blender, whatever sculpting application you're using to create the art, the quicker this will happen. So for an example, I found out that I had a style back in my final year of art school when an instructor approached me and he said, I love this piece you're working on. And it's just so you and it's so your style. So obviously I had no idea at the time what they meant when they said this. So I went home and I just looked at my piece and I had to break it down. I found out that my style, no matter what I sculpted, seeped into the way I sculpted. And that this was actually obvious uh, in my final sculpts when other artists would look at my work. So early on, this was actually a very clear way for me to become a more unique artist and essentially standing out amongst other artists. Uh, you might be asking how. Uh, so the one tip I can give you when finding out your style is speed sculpting. So like the video you're watching in the background here, I would make sure that I made time each day to spend speed sculpting anything, whether it was a character or an asset, anything that I found interesting enough, I just sculpted. After a while, this is actually going to give you two things, which is you're going to become much faster as an artist to sculpt and your interpretation of the concept is going to be very different and you're going to translate that into 3D, which will become your style. So good luck. Don't rush this because this is the best phase of being an artist and becoming an artist. It's really magical when you finally discover what makes you different to other artists. So now you've found your style. The next on my list fits perfectly and that's choosing your discipline as an artist. Because we're focusing more on the 3D character pathway, I want you to really zone in on the style and decide if your art looks better stylized or realistic. So this isn't like a complicated thing. You'll really find yourself leaning more towards one than the other. And before you know it, the last two or three sculpts you did will show pretty much what you like to do more. For example, in my case, early on, I really wanted to work on hyper-realistic characters and creatures, but my first job into the gaming industry was purely based off of all of my stylized characters in my portfolio. And I think that just leaves the last thing to talk about on this list, which I'll wrap up with, and that's your portfolio. I'm going to say it comes down to just three words. Don't overcomplicate. Again, another quite simple step is that if you're looking for a job at a specific studio, or even if you find a job on a job posting website from a studio that clearly only works with stylized characters, then don't show them your realistic characters. In fact, only show two or three of your best stylized characters. The reason why I recommend two or three is because whoever's looking at your portfolio is only going to look at pretty much one of those characters. And they're either going to decide really quickly if you are 
like fit for the job based off of that one character. And that's it. So I hope you really enjoy my tips. This is like a very different video for me, but uh, I'm just going to leave you with the speed sculpt going on in the background. Um, it took me roughly two hours to do the speed sculpt in this background. So I decided to wrap it up with some poly paint. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Thank you.